Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Gopi Janavala Bha Giri Varadhari Gopi Janavala Bha Giri Varadhari Yashoda Nandana Pajajana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Pajajana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Jamuna Tira Bonachari Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari <coughs> Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Om Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Paduvijaka Charja Ashtoto, the Sri Srimad, the Divine Grace, Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta, Soma Prabhupada Ki Jai. Iskan BBT Founder Acharya, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jai Om Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Paravijaka Charja Ashtota with the Sri Srimad. His Divine Grace, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Ki Jai. Ananta Koti Vaishnava Niki Jai. Nama Charja Srila Haridas Thakur Ki Jai. Srimad Bhagavad Gita Ki Jai. Samaveta Bhakta Bindiki Jai. All glory to the assembled devotees. All glory to the assembled devotees. All glory to the assembled devotees. All glory to Sri Guru and Gauranga. Okay, let me just get this thing on. All right, so let's just get our place first. Page 19, right in the middle of the page. Okay. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. On this 16th day of August 2023 in San Diego, we're reading from Srimad Bhagavad Gita as it is, translation and commentary by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. And we are still in the introduction. Page 19, right in the middle of the page there. In the effulgent rays of the spiritual sky, 
there are innumerable planets floating. The Brahma Jyoti emanates from the supreme abode, Krishna Loka, and the Ananda Maya, Chinmaya planets, which are not material, float in those rays. The Lord says, Natad basiyate suryo nashashanko napavakaha yadgatva nanabartante tadhama paramang mama. One who can approach that spiritual sky is not required to descend again to the material sky. In the material sky, even if we approach the highest planet, Brahma Loka, what to speak of the moon, we will find the same conditions of life, namely birth, death, disease, and old age. No planet in the material universe is free from these four principles of material existence. The living entities are traveling from one planet to another, but it is not that we can go to any planet we like merely by a mechanical arrangement. If we desire to go to other planets, there is a process for going there. This is also mentioned, Yanti Deva Vrata Devan, Pitrin Yanti Bhutri Vrataha. No mechanical arrangement is necessary if we want interplanetary travel. The Gita instructs, Yanti Deva Vrata Devan. The moon, the sun, and higher planets are called Svargaloka. There are three different statuses of planets, higher, middle, and lower planetary systems. The earth belongs to the middle planetary system. The Bhagavad Gita informs us how to travel to the higher planetary systems, Deva Loka, with a very simple formula, Yanti Deva Vrata Devan. One need only worship the particular demigod of that particular planet, and in that way go to the moon, the sun, or any, other, any of the uh, higher planetary systems. Yet the Bhagavad Gita does not advise us to go to any of the planets in this material world. Because even if we go to Brahma Loka, the highest planet, through some sort of mechanical contrivance by maybe traveling for 40,000 years, and who would live that long, we will still find the material inconveniences of birth, death, disease, and old age. But one who wants to approach the supreme planet, Krishna Loka, or any other planet within the spiritual sky, will not meet with these material inconveniences. Amongst all the planets in the spiritual sky, there is one supreme planet called Goloka Vrindavan, the original planet in the abode of the original personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna. All of this information is given in the Bhagavad Gita, and we are given, through its instruction, information how to leave the material world and begin a truly blissful life in the spiritual sky. Om Jnana Timarandasya Jnanandana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Mena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha I was born in the darkest of ignorance, but my spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada, opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my humble obeisance unto him and all members of Sri Parampara. So, Srila Prabhupada is continuing to contrast the spiritual world with the material world. And in the material world, he's, he's reiterating here, I think we mentioned several times, the inevitable um, sufferings that we have to undergo here. He keeps mentioning birth, death, old age, and disease. And there's also the threefold miseries. It's nice to remember those. They're not, in, they're not um, there's some overlap. In other words, birth, death, old age, and disease are kind of... Uh, results of something that happens with the threefold miseries. So the threefold miseries in the Sanskrit is adhyatmak, adhidaivak, and adhibhautik, adhibhautik, klesha. Klesha means sufferings. So adhyatmak, we've been through this before, but it's good to reiterate it. These are miseries that are uh, caused by your own body and mind. Now clearly, uh, suppose you get an injury when you're a child or something, and then you have a a bad back, and so there's always pain there unless you're taking some uh, pain reliever. It can happen, something like that, right? So the injury came, some uh, kid tripped you on the, on, on the baseball field and you fell down, hit a rock, something, and then you permanent, you know, this thing happens all the time. So you can say, well, that was called by another being, another living entity, and it's adibautic miseries. But as time goes on, it's adiatmic. You know, that 40 years ago, you got tripped on the, on the baseball field, but you still have this bad back, and it's still causing you pain. So it's adi now it's adiatmic, but it was originally caused by adibautic, you understand? So these things go on. And adidaivik, 
I pointed this out. Adidaivik means caused by the devas. In other words, natural disturbances, we call them. And um, now they seem, they seem to be getting worse. I mean, we just had the hottest July in, in history, right? And if you, you, you look at this, I couldn't believe it. There was, in Iran, the temperature hit 158 degrees Fahrenheit. Some place, one place there. Can you believe that? Obviously, you can't live like that outside, so whoever had air conditioning survived, you know, or whatever, hiding in a cave. So, and it's happening, stuff like that is happening all over. You know, the, the temperature of the ocean off of the Key West, at the very tip of Florida, is, was over 100 degrees in the ocean. I, I stopped going in this ocean a long time ago. It was too cold, you know. <laughs> But uh, that, all that heat then feeds the hurricanes. If you know how hurricanes are generated, the more hot the water is, the more, more the powerful the hurricanes. So everyone's bracing themselves for really heavy hurricane season. So, but what caused that? Well, we know it's caused by global warming, which is caused by burning fossil fuels, which is done by human beings. So now we're back to Adibaltic, right? So the, you can see how it is. <laughs> So the point is, is that this world is a world of, of suffering, inevitably. And uh, we, don't, we don't really know how to mitigate it. This is one verse that Pallad Burmar speaks, one of his prayers to uh, Nishringadev. They're very instructive. The seventh canto, I think that's the uh, ninth chapter in the seventh canto. And one of them I always uh, remember. He's describing the situation in the material world for three lines in the verse, and then the fourth line gives a solution. So he says, Yasmat priya priya yoga sa yoga janma shoka agnina sakala yona shadaya mana. Du kaushadam tadabidukam adhadiyaham buman bamami vadame tavadasya yogam. So what he's describing there is something we can all understand. Yasmat, by, by the influence of this, by this cause, it's a causal thing. Priya priya yoga sa yoga janma shoka agnina. Shoka agnina means the, the fire of lamentation. Fire of lamentation. So he says to to um, the I've been I've been burning in this fire of lamentation since time immemorial. All the time, I'm, you know, he's taking the position as the great devotees do of, of a conditioned soul. So he's, he's you know the highest devotee, but he's taking that position. So what does this mean? It's very instructive. Uh, priya, apriya, viyoga, sa yoga. So priya, the things that are dear to us that give us pleasure, or that just give us comfort, one of which is our body, or the health of our body, you know, and a thousand million other things that we need, a comfortable place to live, and all these things. These are the things that are dear, that we want to hold on to. But by the force of time, they're taken away from us. You know, ultimately, the body is taken away by death. But bef way before that, your health is taken away, old age, disease, right, is going on. Or a million other things can happen that takes away things that are important to you. Your child could die, whatever, you know. So this is a source of misery, indeed. And then on the other side, you have apriya samyoga, or sayoga. Things that are, you're, you're, you abhor, that you're afraid of, that you don't want to, so they're forced upon you. You know, poverty. Nobody wants to be poverty-stricken. But by force of circumstance, it happens all the time. Homelessness. We see you walking on the streets here. Uh, there's, so, there's so few compared to other places, even in this city. Uh, I think downtown, they have a few of those tent things on the street. And in L.A., it's, it's horrific, you know. So these are people who somehow or other fell through the cracks, and they, they don't have enough money to, you know. I mean, it's perfectly reasonable. You just come down to the Pacific Beach, you can get a nice uh, studio apartment for 2500 a month. What's the problem? <laughs> so that's another misery. Your, your nicely situated rent goes up, 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 and says, sorry, you got to get out. You know? <laughs> so that's what this is. So the, the things that are abominable are forced upon you. The things that are dear are, are, are torn away from you. And all of this con constitutes a shok agnina, burning in the fire of lamentation. And then he says, not just in one body, not just the human bodies, sakar the yonishu, means in all, any embodied soul has to suffer this. Now in human life, we, we have the higher intelligence. That means that we can suffer more because so much of the suffering is anticipating the things that will happen. The dogs don't know, you know, the things that are happening. They're, they're living in the moment, right? 
Big dog comes, run away, you know, fight, you know, it's gonna be, and then the next day you forget about it. But human beings, oh, maybe a big dog will come, you know, and I better get this, you know. That, that's another kind of misery. That's, that's fear, that's lament anxiety, right? So anyway, so, Sakala Yonasa Dayamana. And then he says, then he says, very, very interesting, especially in the human form, Duke Aushadam. Aushadam means a, generally an herbal remedy, but it can be any remedy. So we have so many remedies for these dukkha, right? You get some disease, oh, we have, you know, go, just go down and show your card. Hopefully, you got nice coverage, and you can get relief from the, from the misery. So this is Duke Aushadam. But then he says something interesting. Duke Aushadam Dadapi Dukam. The very remedies for the difficulty cause more difficulty. Just think of uh, the situation now. What is it? hundred say, say just to say for the argument say it's about 120 years into the era of the internal combustion engine. The first cars were built in the early 20th century, right? Ford, you know, the Model T's. So now, God, I saw this 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 image one time. It was a photograph of a. Um, in China, they had an intersection, you know, like we have where, where so many cars come together, then you go to the different, there was like 20 different lanes, and, the, and the, they're all filled with cars. And they have, they have um, a, a, you know, uh, what would you say, um, traffic jams that can last for days there in China. And, you, you know, you have to bring your lunch and your dinner and, you know, you, to the... So the point is, and then it's spewing all of this greenhouse gases, you know, and, and you get a little prosperous, and this is the demoniac, you know, we can, this is what happens. People in the country, they make a little money, then they're, they're able to buy meat, and so they, you know, people eat more meat. And so that, they have to use more of the land to raise the cows, and that causes more greenhouse gases if you look at the science, right? So this is, this is what happens on the earth in, a, in the material world. And then in three or four syllables, he gives the root of the whole problem. Because I'm thinking I'm something I'm not, basically this body. It all grows out of the false ego of identifying with the material body. So then what's the solution? Right? One more line to the verse. <laughs> so you've got to visualize this little boy, you know, Pallad is, is, is praying to the Shringadev, who is now pacified. I mean, when he killed the Ranjakashipu, it wasn't just the Ranjakashipu, it was a whole army there of demons, and he had all these arms and all these weapons, just slaying them, there's blood everywhere, you know, and his, the Shringadev is just raging. And then, at a pretty good distance, you've got all the demigods came down to congratulate him. And there's Brahma and, and, and Indra and the goddess of fortune, and they offer their prayers from a good distance, you know. But he doesn't get pacified, he's still raging, you know. So finally, there's Pilatus sitting there, Pilatus, you try to see if you can... <laughs> pass it. He likes you, you know. <laughs> so Pallad is fearless, but to speak of the Shringadev is his worshipable God. So he goes up right up to him, you know, and as soon as the Shringadev sees Pallad, he becomes Komal in the Shringa. You know, Komal means gentle in the Shringa. You'll see some paintings where he's very gentle, you know, like <laughs> and he's got his hand on Pallad's head. So Pallad's offering these prayers. So the last, so Pallad says at the last line, Bhuman, O great Lord, Brahmame Badame Tabadasi Yogam. Please instruct this wandering soul uh, in the science of your Dasya Yoga, Bhakti Yoga. That's the real remedy for all these miseries. You know, and and not not that, you know, as soon as you take up Bhakti Yoga, you're never gonna you know uh, have anything negative happen to you. You know, I had a, a serious sprained ankle about a year ago. I could hardly walk. I you know, I had I was walking around with a cane. All right, you know, but it healed up. But the point is how you take it. The things are going to happen, but our reaction to it is in our hand. And, and, we, and we've been seeing from the morning, from the morning classes, those who have been able to hear the morning classes, with uh, Chitra Ketu, who uh, was, was feeling you know, the greatest uh, you know, fire of anxiety when he has millions of wives and nobody you know, can, can give him a, a son, you know, an heir to the kingdom. And he's just so much anxiety. And finally, he gets a blessing from Angira and he gets this beautiful little son. He gets about all the other queens, and he just, you know, but they get envious and, and poison the child, and now he's more miserable than before. So in that situation, Angira, Muni, and Narada Muni, they come down and they instruct him. And not only that, but Narada brings the child back to life, and he also instructs him, you know, the dead, so-called dead child. So he, he gets a revelation, 
takes sannyas more or less, gets instructed by Narada, sees uh, Sankushan in seven days. It's, in, you know, very, that's a new record. I mean, uh, Dhruva was at least six months, you know, and uh, we're going lifetimes chanting Hare Krishna. <laughs> anyway, so he's very advanced in the devotee now, and, you know, this, anyway, those who are hearing the story, he sees Shiva in poverty, and he is critical of Shiva, and poverty takes offense, and she curses him to become a demon. He's cool with that. He's completely tolerant. You know, it, 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 it's, it's, it's a scary thing. You know, I'm going to lose this position. I'm not now flying nicely in the air. And, I'm, you know, he's, he's with all the Vijadara ladies. But they're enjoying by, by glorifying the Lord. You know, he's, he's, but anyway, so he's going to lose that. But he's not in any anxiety. He accepts it. You know, his mother, he calls her mother and she calls him son. And so the whole thing is a lesson in tolerance and equipoise on the platform of pure devotion. So that's, that's the real solution to the miseries of this world, is to, to get to the state where you can tolerate, and Prahlad can tolerate practically anything, thrown into a vat of oil, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. He scared his father so much, you know, after he tried to kill him in all these ways, and he couldn't be killed. His father said, Boy, what kind of strength? Where did you get your strength? Where did you get this power of, you know... He said, same place you do, Father, from the Lord. He said, that just angered him more, you know. Anyway, I'm going to go into that whole story. But, but that's, he's giving us the, uh, the solution, and that is always a solution. To get out of the bodily concept of life, the false ego, become fixed on, uh, on, uh, on Krishna, on service to Krishna, and then to navigate this world of danger, padam padam vipadam natesham, the famous phrase, there's danger at every step, um, with, uh, and it, you know, if you become advanced enough, you can be fearless. And, 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 and even in the face of death, I gave some examples of our own people here who were able to pass away very peacefully because of their advancement in Krishna consciousness. So that's, that's the answer. And meanwhile, you know, you're positively feeling so much bhakti rasa and, and pleasure that uh, you, you, you're, not, you're not afraid. Moment to moment, you're experiencing this, and so you can, go, you can navigate the material world very nicely. That's the idea. And at the end, back to Godhead. No more material body. There's no question of suffering anymore. Okay. So, where was I? <laughs> I was... Okay, we did that one. 20, uh, 20 right at the top, right? Second, second line? Second paragraph, yet the Bhagavad. Okay. Yet the Bhagavad Gita does not advise us to go to any of the planets in the material world because even if we go to Brahma Loka, the highest planet, through some sort of mechanical contrivance by maybe traveling for four, I think we read that. In the 15th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, the real picture of the material world is given. It is said there, Urdramulam adakshakam ashratam praharabhyam chandangsi yasiparnani yastam vedasabhedavit. Here the material world is described as a tree whose roots are upwards and branches are below. We have experience of a tree whose roots are upward if one stands on the bank of a river or any reservoir of water. A river maybe is a little bit too uh, turbulent, but yeah, it, like a, a calm lake, you know, you can see it reflected. It's a reflection. Uh, he can see that the trees reflected in the water are upside down. The branches go downward and the roots upward. Similarly, this material world is a reflection of the spiritual world. The material world is but a shadow of uh, reality. In the shadow, there is no reality or substantiality, but from the shadow, we can understand that there are substance and reality. In the desert, there is no water, but the mirage suggests that there is such a thing as water. In the material world, there is no water, there is no happiness, but the real water of actual happiness is there in the spiritual world. The Lord suggests that we attain the spiritual world in the following manner. Bhagavad Gita 15.5 Nirmana moha chitta sangha dosha adhyatma nitya vinavritta kama Dvanvaiva mukta sukha dukkha sangha gachancha mudha padamam vayantha That padam abhyam or eternal kingdom can be reached by one who is nirmana moha what does this mean? We are after designations. Someone wants to become sir. Someone wants to become a lord. Someone wants to become the president of, or a rich man or a king or something else. So nirmana means free of pride. 
and mode is illusion, be, uh, free of the illusion or delusion of false pride. As long as we are attached to these designations, we are attached to the body because designations belong to the body. But we are not these bodies, and realizing this is the first stage in spiritual realization. We are associated with the three modes of material nature, but we must become detached through devotional service to the Lord. If we are not attached to devotional service to the Lord, then we cannot become detached from the modes of material nature. Designations and attachments are due to our lust and desire, our wanting to lord it over the material nature. As long as we do not give up this propensity of lording it over material nature, there is no possibility of returning to the kingdom of the Supreme, the Sanatan Dhamma. So you notice it's Sanatan Dharma, and now it's Sanatan Dhamma. Dhamma is the place, eternal abode. That eternal kingdom, which is never destroyed, can be approached by one who is not bewildered by the attractions of false material enjoyments, who is situated in the service of the Supreme Lord. One so situated can easily approach that supreme abode. Elsewhere in the Gita, Gita 8.21, it is stated, Avyakto chada ityuktas tamahu padamam gatim yam prapyana navartante tad dhamma padamam mama Avyakta means unmanifested. Not even, uh, not even all of the material world is manifested before us. Our senses are so imperfect that we cannot even see all of the stars within this material universe. In the Vedic literature, we can receive much information about all the planets, and we can believe it or not believe it. All of the important planets are described in the Vedic literatures, especially Srimad Bhagavatam. And the spiritual world, which is beyond this material sky, is described as avyakta, unmanifested. One should desire and hanker after that supreme kingdom, for when one attains that kingdom, he does not have to return to this material world. So this is one of the uh, challenges we have, uh, and that is because we can't, with our present senses, we can't see the Lord directly. We can't see. That's why he's known as Adhokshaja. This, this uh, name is given. It's not a Vrindavan name, but it's a name that's important, especially for those who are beginning on the path of devotional service, and we're trying to build our faith. So Adhokshaja is made of three different concepts. Adha, Aksha, and Ja. Now, Ja is short for Janma, or birth, or generation. So, Aksha stands for the eyes, or in fact, all, all senses. Knowledge produced by investigation through the senses and the mind uh, is called Aksha Ja. It's born of this uh, ascending process, or investigation like that. But that's always imperfect. Krishna, uh, Adha means down. Krishna pushes that down. In other words, He's beyond that. It's the definition of transcendental, beyond the reach of a material mind and senses. So now we're in kind of a dilemma because we can't perceive uh, the, our, our goal, what we're trying to, to, to build faith in. How can we uh, you know, uh, undergo austerities and discipline in order to attain it? So that's, the, that's where the uh, spiritual master comes in, the line of disciplic succession, and the Shastra. And because we get so many nice descriptions from the Shastra, but why should we believe them? It sounds like, you know, because here's someone who's embodying it. See, this was the thing. Prabhupada was able to uh, embody the reality of the Shastra. Before our very eyes, he showed an example of um, realization, peacefulness, joy, happiness, even in great difficulty, he wasn't thrown, you know. In other words, he had the credibility and the, abil and the ability to impart the faith simply by his, his influence. And then the, the, the clincher is, is that he also gave us the means by which we could also perceive. As soon as you start chanting seriously with some concentration and even a smidgen of faith, you're going to experience something. You, get, you know, I'm, 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 I'm watching, I highly recommend this series of uh, YouTube videos that, uh, they, that um, my old friend Yadubar made many years ago, following Srila Prabhupada. Uh, they're on, they're on, have you ever got in there? There are like 11 of them. And you can get them all, see them all on YouTube, one after another. And you can see, you know, from the first days, they, you know, uh, Prabhupada in 26 Second Avenue, or down, down in the Bowery, 
you know, and uh, there's, there's very little video at that time, but you get the idea. You speak to some of the, the Mukunda Maharaj gets on there, you know, Mike, Michael Grant and the early devotees and telling how they experience like that. And then it grows and grows and grows. And now I'm just seeing this in Germany and in Mayapur, there's all this stuff and thousands of devotees, you know. <laughs> but but, it, but the, the wonderful thing about it is that you have devotees who were there at the time narrating, you see. They're narrating, telling, you know, the feel about, and giving their little insight of what they experience. So you are there type of thing, you know, it's a wonderful thing. And you can see how the movement grew so much. And there's so much kirtan, so much chanting going on. The devotees, when Prabhupada left in 67, he, he came to America in 65, September, struggled for about a year, founded the movement, 26 Second Avenue, and then went to the West Coast, and things were really taken off there. It was the summer of love, 1967. You look at the history, you know, the LSD and the hippies are all gathering. And Prabhupada was right in the middle of it. Krishna brought him there right at that time. <laughs> if he'd been a year earlier or a year later, it might not. I, came, I went to the, the same place, uh, Haight-Ashbury, but I went in 68. And uh, there was still something going on there, but it wasn't the same field. field. If you look up in Wikipedia, Altamont, it's a famous consonant. Did you ever hear of it? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, there's a movie about it. And you know, the 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 the, the, the drugs changed. You know, now it was it was, it was uh, methamphetamine and coke, you know things that we. Were. Anyway, it was like a whole different feel. But Prabhupada was right there. The big it's 1970 Ratha Yatra uh, was incredible. You know, thousands of hippies. You see that? What is going on here? You know, <laughs> and, and so. But then what happened, Prabhupada, you know, he was so ecstatic, you know, he, and he, the limitations of his body, you know, he was now by that time of 70, 71, you know. So he comes back to, to the, the, the East Coast and the devotees, they thought he might die in Vrindavan, you know, a serious uh, a, a, a stroke he had, and, and he went back to Vrindavan with one devotee, Kirtananda. And then when he finally returned to America later that year in December, he came to San Francisco, the devotees were so overjoyed, you know. There's Prabhupada come back to them to save them, you know. <laughs> There's so much wonder, wonderful thing there. But, but that, that was the whole, the whole idea, is that by his person, by his you know, personal care and his preaching and, and his very life, uh, he was imparting faith and the devotees were ready to chant and they were ready to do the four regular principles. And by that they became purified and started to experience more and more ecstasy, you know, themselves. It's a real, it's a real thing. So, so, that, so this again gives credibility to everything else. And then when you read some amazing things in the Bhagavatam, you say, well, you know, this whole thing is amazing. I, just the fact that I'm now still alive and chanting Hare Krishna is, is, a, is a miracle. You know, for many devotees, <laughs> Robert saved them. So the whole idea is that uh, th there's this verse, you know, the Bhagavatam is, is expansion on the Bhagavad Gita, gives so much detail. What is the Dharma? Because the, Arjun, in the, sec, the second chapter, seventh verse, he undergoes a change there. He's kind, of, he's, he's kind of showing us how we can also approach the Supreme Personality of God and the Bhagavad Gita for the best reason. And so he was arguing with Krishna. You know, he had this whole Vedic argument. He was arguing on the basis of the Vedas. If all these men get killed, then the women will be unprotected, and there'll be Varna Sankar, means unregulated population on the earth will be... You know, overrun, and it'll be my fault because I fought in the battlefield. I'm the so I'll forget it. I'm going to the forest, you know. But you know, you know, Krishna is right there, and he knows Krishna wants him to fight, so he's kind of torn. And finally, at the end, there he just sits down on the chariot and drops his bow. He's paralyzed. You know, this is a crisis. And so, at the, at the beginning of the second chapter, in the seventh verse, he has this critical verse. Instead of because he's a friend of Krishna, so he's arguing back and forth, you know, and, and, but they're not getting anywhere. So he says, Karpanya dosho pahata sobhava pritchamitam dharma samura chetak yakshe eksa nishtitam bruhitan me shishyastehim sharimam tvam papannam. So here he's surrendering to Krishna as a guru rather than as a friend, see? So karpanya to be kripana, you know, this miserly weakness, this, this the, you know, has, has stolen away my real nature. Upahata sobhava. I'm a, I'm a chatri. I've fought, I've fought in so many battles. I'm known as a hero on the battlefield, you know. And all of that has been taken away by my confusion about my relationship with the, my friends and relatives and worshipable guru on the other side, you know. So, uh, 
Dharma Samuda Chetam, that's a very critical thing because in the Vedic culture, Dharma is like a critical factor. Am I doing the right thing according to the Vedas or am I incurring sin by this activity? You want to know, you know what the real Dharma is. But here it says, Samuda Chetam, my consciousness has become bewildered by what is the right thing to do. On one side is my worshipful Bhishma, I can't fight him and kill him. He raised us as a grandfather when we, we were orphans. He, you know, and, and my teacher, Jodhachari, and so many other realms. So he's, he's confused. So, Pritchamitam Dharma Samuda Cheta, Yakshaya Ksyan Nishtitam Bruhitam. So here's the word Shreya. This keeps coming up again and again. Such an important concept. Shreya and Nikshreya. Shreya means the ultimate good, Prayas is the immediate good. Prabhupada gives this wonderful contrast. Shreyas and Prayas. Prayas means, let's go party. You know, we have some money, right? <laughs> Where can we have the fun? Where are the action happening right now, right? Your senses are all attuned to enjoy. And, you know, you come back after a night out, you know, you're half drunk and you fall into bed, okay, and that's it. You know, it's temporary. <laughs> that's the point, it's temporary. A little child, you know, he doesn't want to go to school. Prabhupada gave himself as an example. He, wouldn't, he said if it hadn't been for his mother, his father was always, was always uh, you know, uh, what would say, you know, giving in to him. You know, he, so he said, I don't want to go to school. Maybe tomorrow. I'll go tomorrow. His father said, okay, oh, no problem. But his mother finally said, no, no, no. She, they hired a, a, a man to, to take him, you know, to pull him in. <laughs> but then when you get accustomed to school, you know, okay, I'm, I'm in school. So this is the uh, prayas. What's the immediate pleasure I can have? The more that you look for your immediate pleasure, the more the mode of ignorance you are. You know, the whole society is like that. So, but shreya is ultimate good. And nikshreya just emphasizes the point. What is the ultimate good? The good of the soul. Sva'arta. The arta means something valuable. Sva'arta means that which is most valuable uh, for the soul. The goal of the soul. Uh, what is uh, again? Pallad preaching to his father. This, this time he's not. It's not a prayer to the Shringadev, but he's. Uh, he says, "Na yad vachas chitta padang hare yesho." No, na te vidu swarta katim hi vishnum durashiya e baharatama. Na te and the previous. He's referring to the previous verse. Those who have taken a very firm vow to try to enjoy materialistic family life, whose senses are out of control, and who keep chewing the chewed. This is, this is a, a phrase that, it, if you memorize in Sanskrit, it'll, it'll help you give up any sense gratification. Punak punas charvata jarvananam, again and again chewing the chewed. You know, and of course, Prabhupada gives the example of, uh, of sugar cane. That's, you know, chew, chew, you get the sugar, somebody threw it away in the street, and some poor guy goes, maybe it's still a little sweet, you know. But for us, uh, sugar, uh, bubble gum, you know, go ahead. So that, this is material life, is that you're, you're trying again and again to enjoy what you used to enjoy. You can't, the senses have changed, you know, it's punak punak. So, that, so this is uh, prayas. What is the immediate good? You can't experience it anymore, you get all depressed. But shreyas is the ultimate good or the goal of the soul. And you come to the point of being able to enjoy at every moment. Because the soul doesn't have the limitation that the body has. If you can, if, if, if you can, it's, it's a simple syllogism. We know that the, by, from the Shastra, from so many times Prabhupada telling us that the holy name is Krishna. There's no difference, right? Now Krishna is an Andamaya Bhyasad. He's always blissful. So if we can relish the holy name as we hear the, the uh, and it's available to us, right? It's not some secret thing. It is. Uh, as we hear the, the uh, great Acharyas explain it. Right? So this is one of the favorite verses. It's from the Vedagda Madhava, and it's included in Anchalila chapter 1 of the CC. It's quoted twice there. Tunde tanda vanida timbata nute tundavali labdhe karna krodha kadam vanigata yate karna bode vyaks piham chetak prangana sangane vichayate sarvindriyana kutim no jane janitaki yad vidamitai krishnati varnadvai this is Rupa Goswami's description of how he's experiencing the holy name. He says, I don't know how much nectar those two syllables Krishna have produced. When I chant them, and I want, uh, they, they seem to dance in my tongue and my mouth. I want to have millions of mouths to relish the sweetness of the holy name. When they enter into my ears, I want to have millions of ears to drink in that nectar of the holy name. When they enter the courtyard of my heart, then all my senses become inert and my mind becomes fixed on Krishna. You know, this is just one description. But, and and uh, Sanatana Goswami, 
right near the beginning of Brihad Bhagavatam, he has this wonderful verse, Jayati Jayati Namananda Rupam Marare Vidamita Nija Dharma Dhyana Pujadi Yatnam Katam Apisakadatam Muktidam Praninam Yat Padam Amitamekam Jeevanam Bhushanam Me <laughs> Jayati Jayati, O glories, O glories, to the holy name of Krishna, which is Namananda Rupam, the very form of bliss. Marari, Marari is the name for Krishna. Namana Rupa Marari, Vidamita Nija Dharma Jana Pujariyatam. Then, if one who takes shelter of this name, he gives up all material duties and, and, and involvement. You, you just, it's, it's, det- it's, it's detestful, you know. You don't involve, no, no worshipping demigods, who cares? I don't want to go to Indraloka, forget it. You know, you just, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, you know, just, just, there's so much. So, and then it says, somehow if chanted even once by anyone with faith or without faith, it liberates him from millions of births of sinful activities. Katamapisakadata mukti dam praninam yat padamamamitam ekam, it is my soul and supreme nectar. Padamamamitam ekam jivanam, my very life, bhushanam, my only ornament. You know, he's sitting there with a loincloth, chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. So that's the, now, now there's also a verse, uh, uh, I, I'm kind of running out of time. Uh, what is this, you know, it's scientifically, the, the name Krishna, you know, why is it so? <laughs> so there's a verse like that, uh, describing it, dividing it. So, let's see, Krishna bhu vachika, Krishna bhu vachika sabdo, nascha nirvati vachika. Tayor aikyam param brahma krishna mitya vidyate. The very syllable krish is the, is the uh, means the all, all attractive nature. That which attracts you. And then, and then na is, uh, indicates supreme bliss or happiness, you see? And you put them together, and it's the supreme Brahman, Todoraikim Param Brahma, Krishna Ityabhidiyate, known as the soul. And as far as the name Rama goes, Brahmante Yogado Nante, Satyananda Chadabhani, Iti Rama Padainesu Param Brahma Vidyate. Here's another manifestation of Param Brahma. So he's saying there, that uh, Ramante Yogino Anante, the yogis, the bhakti yogis, uh, uh, enjoy unlimited and unending happiness. Ramante Yogino Anante, Satyananda, so this is real happiness, real bliss, not this fake thing of the sense gratification, which is anything but eternal. Uh, Satyananda Chidatmi, Chidatmi means pure spiritual happiness. Iti Rama Padina, therefore the name Rama. It also designates the Supreme Brahman, Param Brahma. So the word Krishna and the word Rama both designate Supreme Brahman, and they're both full of attraction and full of bliss. And we can experience it. Now, when you, when you chant, of course, the mind is going, you're not chanting purely, but you're still experiencing something, and Krishna sees you chanting, and he's purifying from within. And the more we chant, and the more we follow the strictures, we perfect the chanting. And uh, just like we hear that wonderful story from Bhakti Sunda Maharaj, right? He's chanting, 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 chanting all day, <laughs> for days on end, you know. He's just, and then his friend comes, he's in a, a secluded place on a mountainside, I think in some South America somewhere, you know. And he's got a tent, and his friend shows up with two girls, beautiful young girls on his arm. On his arm. He says, all right, this is great, you know. And there he's his old friend. How are you doing? I forget his Carmi name, you know. Uh, let's enjoy, you know. And so Bhakti Sunda had to think fast, you know, you were there, right? <laughs> said, oh no, I, I, a friend loaned, uh, loaned me this, so I rented it, I have to return it now. So he started wrapping up the tent, you know. He said, just call him, you know, on the cell phone, tell him. He said, no, 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 it's not possible, you know. I didn't need to call. <laughs> so he had been experiencing real bliss, you know. And he said, no, 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 I'm not going for that, you know. That this is, so it was, it was a test, which he passed nicely, you know. So that's the, that's the, the idea, is that um, by tasting bhakti rasa, which doesn't, is not dependent on the senses, the external senses, which you can experience just sitting and, and thinking of Krishna Leela. But we have so many services that, you know. Um, then you become detached from all this other stuff. You know, both the positive and negative. I'm not going for the sense gratification, and if difficulties come, we, we were able to tolerate, you know, because you're, you're experiencing the bliss within. So that's available to any one of us, 
to any one of us if we're determined. That's, that's why the first, second chapter, there's so much about being determined. Have you ever say Atma Kabud here? Yeah. And then the, the universal instruction. Bogai Shraya Pasaktanam Taya Padita Chaitasam. Have you ever say Atma Kabud here? Samadho Navadhiyate. For those who are too much attracted to material pleasure and uh, wealth, and whose mind is bewildered by such things, you cannot attain that firm uh, determination to pra practice the in advance. So we have to come to that point of, of determination. And that's why it's important to have the guide. The guru is important. Because you find it's, 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 it's a personal relationship. It's not just, uh, you know, with Krishna it's a personal relationship, but that can be remote. You cannot, you're not there yet. You have that all the time. But if you really have a personal relationship with your mentor, both, you know, Shiksha Guru and Diksha Guru, then uh, you feel, no, no, I can't do that. He'll be very, you know, very um, disappointed. And then you have association of others who are following seriously to give you this, this strength. So that's how it works, and that's the movement Prabhupada started. And here, the, the seeds are all being planted now. You know, Prabhupada is going through so many points, trying to give as much as he can in this introduction. Because I told you the circumstance, he doesn't really know what's going to happen, you know. So at least he'll have this nice essay, you know. But uh, what, I don't know if he planned it as the introduction. I think he did. But uh, who knew what was going to come, you know. But it turned out it was, you know, translated into 60, 70 languages, you know. Well, we didn't make much progress on the introduction. <laughs> Maybe I should read one more paragraph. Uh, where were we? Okay, well, this, of course, the, uh, I didn't deal with the upside-down banyan tree, but it's the, it's the reverse. It's, ups, you know, the, the, it's a, it's a uh, and this verse, the key verse, Nirmana Moha, this is actually the process of surrender. The, this, this comes in. Jita uh, Sangha Dosha. He had probably, you know, Prabhupada's giving these verses, not giving all the translation. So being free, and then Jita Sangha Dosha. This is very important because Sangha, uh, association, uh, if, if, if you're not associating with devotees, that, that creates so many faults in your personality. You're associating with people in different modes, you're picking up this and that, you know, this, this is. So, but you conquer. See, by this process, you conquer all the faults that have accumulated by bad association. This is dealt with in the Sadhusangasha third canto. We'll talk about that next time. Adhyatma nitya being uh, fixed in the spiritual uh, understanding of Krishna. Vinavritta kama being f finished with uh, material uh, desires and activities. Dvanvara mukta, free of the dualities, good and bad, hot and cold, pleasure and pain. Sukha dukha sangha, call happiness and distress. Gachyanchi mudha, such an amudha, an enlightened soul, goes for sure, gachyanchi mudha, to the padamabhiyam, to the eternal uh, abode of Krishna. You say how, how you can go back to God in this way. So this comes right after, you know, this is the third, uh, fifth verse in that chapter. And he's describing the process of realization. This is Purushottam Yoga, and that reminds me that we've ended Purushottam ma Mas, month. So now you, you, you cannot have any Palak Panir anymore for the next few weeks. <laughs> That's the uh, spinach with curd in it. it. We're supposed to fast from certain foods uh, for this chaturmasya, these four months we're in. And the first month is uh, cooked uh, spinach and veg vegetables like that, you know. But then we had a reprieve for a whole month where you could have it. But now it's two weeks, we can't have it. Then we get fast from yogurt, milk, gourd dal, there's four different things. But don't, don't worry about it too much, because Bhajan Ryan Raj, he always says, yeah, you know, but in fact, but Prabhupada, he didn't really follow it that closely himself. <laughs> so don't worry about it too much. But still, you know, if, 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 if that's happening where you are, then try to follow. All right, we have three minutes. Yes, we have a question. David? Probably too much to buy all three minutes, but I'll, I'll ask him anyways. Okay. Concepts of induction and deduction map onto the ascending and descending processes you're talking about. That's a good question. About. And then the second one, just to load them up, uh, is, is um, the pleasure derived from name, fame, reputation, and so forth, can that be considered a sensory pleasure, or is that uh, of a higher order in that it pertains to mind? It's, 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 there's, there's gross and subtle sense gratification, and that's the subtle sense gratification, which can often be more powerful. The idea of having a position and being honored, you know, uh, it's maya. It's maya. Because we're very insignificant. 
and we're servants of Krishna. So that means, because that's what nirmana means. Nirmana moha means without being bewildered by this false pride. That's why, you know, the key verse to, to, to chant all the time, Trinata pisunichena, tadara pisahishnuna, amanina manadena kirtani iksadahari. Uh, to be more humble than a blade of grass, more tolerant than a tree, always ready to give uh, honor to others, not wanting any honor for oneself. In such a state of mind, one can chant the Hare Krishna mantra constantly. Because you're always calling out the Krishna. You know, you're, you're, you're insignificant and, you know, helpless here, so please save me. But those who say, oh, I got it together, you know, I'm good. You know, <laughs> immediately, you're not good. <laughs> All right, we have time for one little poem. Is that okay? Because we're not, yeah, we're kind of, I'm, all right. Ah, uh, I did that one. Well, this is an old favorite. This is from the Pajab. Oh, no, here. This is, you know, when it, we're, we're not supposed to be misers, right? Miserly activity is, you know, opposed to Brahminical life, you know. But here's a prayer to become a miser. So, so listen up. Vichayani, 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 punak punaha, kripanasya danani, vatunma, namani, babantuna. Com- uh, compelled to constantly collect and con- uh, constantly collect. compelled to constantly collect and count his precious hoard, the miser contemplates his wealth with avaricious aims. Avaricious means greedy. Avaricious aims. Please bless me to become a miser who is compelled, O Lord, to constantly collect and count and contemplate your names. <laughs> so that's the same idea as greed is good. As long as it's greed for pure bhakti rasa, then you have to cultivate. <laughs> All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hari, hari.